Hi, my name is Karen and I'm the education manager at the Clay Studio. Today we're going to be making Mother's Day sculptures based on the sculpture by Robert Indiana in Love Park. If you don't want to do the letters mom, you could choose any other combination of three or four letters. You could do someone's initials with a symbol. You could do XOXO, which would just be two of each. Um, you could do dad or any other combination. You don't necessarily have to do mom, but if you do choose something with three letters, make sure that you choose a symbol as well to do. Here we go. For this project, we're going to need clay. I'm using porcelain, but you could use air dry clay as well. A sponge, a fork, a paper clip or two, a butter knife from your kitchen, and paint brushes, acrylic paint, or underlays is optional. We're also going to need water and some kind of lid. Something between three and five inches is probably best. A rolling pin or soup can will also be helpful if you have one. Now I'm going to roll out my porcelain into a slab using my rolling pin. For the base of my sculpture, the slab needs to be about an eighth of an inch thick. I use an unfolded paper clip to cut the slab into a circle and then use the remaining part of the slab to cut out the letters that I traced with Sharpie onto paper. If you prefer to have a specific font, you could print letters out using a printer as well, and then just trace all of the edges. I'm taking my time to make sure I've traced all of these edges onto the clay so that I don't miss a side of either of these M's. Once I'm done tracing the letters, the next step will be cutting them out using the butter knife. The butter knife works really well for the flat sides of the M, that are longer. I'm gonna take my time with this step so that the letters are exactly how I want them to be because this is the most important part of the sculpture, the letters that spell out the name or initial. My goal is to make as clean of cuts as possible so that the M's come out exactly as I have drawn on the paper. For the inside of the M's, I'm not gonna be able to use the butter knife, so instead I'm going back to the unfolded paper clip to trace a little bit deeper and then cut out the lines for the inside of the M's. I will also do this for any other letter that doesn't have hard edges like the O. If you have a ceramic pin tool at home, a pin tool might actually be easier than a paper clip just because the clay is kind of thick and it's hard to cut using the, a flimsy paper clip. If you have a thicker, sort of an industrial sized paper clip, that might work better as well. For any letter that is has smooth edges or for any shape that has smooth edges, I recommend a pin tool or a paper clip to cut out instead of a knife. Especially for the interior of letters, it's hard to uh, get them out with something that has such a hard edge. I have the heart cut out, so now it's time to rearrange the letters the way that I want them to be. With the word mom, you could spell it in a few different ways. I've decided that I like the heart in the top corner best, but I don't want the M's to be right on top and under each other. I've cut out a second circle a little bit smaller than the first to use as part of the stand to hold the letters on. This will act as a base and I can slip and score one slab to the other to sort of make a stage or a base for the sculpture. Make sure to really use your fork and wet your fork several times or use a damp sponge to wet down the clay enough that when you score everything together it creates that wet gluey slip. And then remember to compress really well so that your two slabs are stuck together. Next I'm going to clean up the base a little bit before I actually add that letters on. This will be easier to do now where I can get all the scoring marks off the parts I don't want them on now as opposed to once I start adding the letters and shape on. Now that the base is slipped and scored together, I'm ready to start adding the letters. The first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm 100% sure I want my letters in the correct order. So for now I'm just switching the heart and the O to see which orientation I like and then I'm going to actually stack them on top of each other so I sort of get a sense of what the overall composition of the three letters and the symbol will be. 
This is the last chance I have to make any adjustments. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what it will look like and if I like the way it's gonna end up. I've realized that the heart is a little too thick and so I'm gonna need to carve out part of the inside of the heart so that it doesn't blow up in the kiln when firing. I'll start cutting out the middle of the heart where I've already traced um, with a knife. This is actually kind of awkward and so in a minute I'm gonna switch to a, um, a pin tool or a loop tool which will carve it out a little better and then I realized that the best tool to actually use is a paper clip with the loop end. That'll really help me dig out the clay in the middle. If you don't have a heart that has so or a shape that has so much interior clay you probably don't need to do this. Also if you have air dry clay you won't need to do this either. Once I've carved out the heart and cleaned it up a little bit. Now I'm ready to go in and actually slip and score the letters together. I'm just making final adjustments to the shapes of all of these and making sure that they're gonna touch each other in enough spaces to slip and score. Because there's minimal surface area where the letters will touch each other, I really need to make sure that I slip and score all of these letters together well. And that first means making sure that they will sit on top of each other well. The heart is a little bit funny, so I'm going to turn it to the side a little bit so that it has more surface area to sit against both sides of the M. And then I mark where the bottom two letters are touching the stand or the base uh, so that I know where I'll slip and score. I use a paper clip to do this, and then I can use my fork to slip and score the spots that I have marked out. Again, making sure to add water to the scoring marks so that there's enough slip there to help hold the two letters onto the base. This is all sped up, obviously, but uh, please take your time with this. It's important since there's not much surface area holding things together. And as you can see, I keep adding water as I go to make sure that we're creating that slip that will sort of act as a clay glue during this process. The M is attached, and now I'm going to work on the O. You can see where I'm just making sure that it all fits together well, and where the O and the M actually touch, I need to score that spot as well, because that's the only connection between the two letters. If I don't score well enough, it's possible that in a kiln or while it's drying, something will crack and fall apart. So. Scoring and slipping is a big part of, of this sculpture, and actually most clay that's slab built. I really want to make sure as I'm slipping and scoring that I'm also compressing. So anytime I'm, I'm scoring something together, I'm also pushing it together. Not so much that it messes with the wet clay, but just enough that I'm sure that they're really stuck. This is a little bit risky, but to show you, I'm holding this sideways. If you uh, don't do this, that's probably better for your sculpture, but um, in the moment I wanted to show you how I've got the two letters onto the base. Now I'm gonna continue to score the other M and then the heart onto the shapes below them. You wanna make sure that your clay isn't too wet during this part. If you have just cut out your slabs, you may need to wait a little while, maybe an hour or two or overnight uh, draped with some plastic over the sculpture to really let everything set up. We call it a workable state or um, a little bit drier than wet, and but you don't want it to get to bone dry, but something in between there so that you can actually score and slip well but still have structure to the clay. I'm just using my fork to slip and score all of these parts together uh, before I will do some cleanup with the sponge at the end. Now the heart's on there and that's sort of the one I'm the most worried about because, because it has less surface area but is also the heaviest. So I'm going to use a little extra coil in there to sort of blend everything out and make sure it's all stuck together well.
Now you can see the finished piece. I'm going to spend a little bit more time cleaning up the edges of the base and the letters um, with a damp sponge before I actually put the underglaze on. If your clay is wet or sticky to the touch, I would recommend waiting a few hours before the underglaze or paint. I'm using uh, some underglazes here of all different colors and I mixed up a pink from red and white because uh, pink is one of my mom's favorite colors. And I'm also using a few different blues because she loves blues and aquamarines. You can see the Robert Indiana love sculpture that I'm referencing because some of the sides of those letters are different colors like green and blue. So I'm going to try to stick with that and do different colors on some of the letters on the sides than on the top surface. If you have acrylic paint, you're welcome to use that, especially for um, air dry clay that will work much better than underglaze. You can water it down uh, with just some tap water um, if you would like more of a watercolor effect. And here's the final piece. Thanks so much for watching.